In this lecture, I am going to start the third CO that is passive vibration control. In general, for every system we have to measure the vibration at the initial stage. So after measuring the type of the vibration and nature of the vibration, we have to control the vibration. Okay. So there are two types of vibration control strategies are there. One is active vibration control and the another one is passive vibration control. In the first CO, we have discussed the basics of vibration, types of vibration and uh, the governing equations for vibration. In the second CO, we have seen the vibration generation mechanisms, how the vibration is generated in uh, rotating machineries and uh, because of uh, air induced vibration. So the third CO is all about passive vibration control. And the fourth CO we are going to discuss about the active vibration control. So in passive vibration control, we are not going to give any energy input. So the system itself will control the vibration without any external input. Okay. So passive vibration control refers to vibration control or mitigation of vibrations by passive techniques such as rubber pads, mechanical springs as opposed to active vibration control. So here in the passive vibration control, we are going to use rubber pads and mechanical springs as isolator pads. So here in rubber pads, we don't need to give any energy input. In a mechanical spring also, we don't need to give any energy input. So the system itself will absorb the vibration and it will control the vibration. In the case of active vibration control, then the system has the following components. So a sensor, actuator and a control system. So for sensor, actuator and control systems, we have to provide some input energy to operate the system. So that is active vibration control. So the performance wise, uh, the passive vibration control has a le is less effective in uh, controlling the vibration. In the case of active control, it is very effective since the sensor sensing uh, the input force and the system will automatically adjust based on the requirement. In the case of passive control, the system will not adjust based on the requirement. The system is a constant. So in simple words, the stiffness of the spring is constant. In the case of active vibration control, the stiffness of the spring will be varying. Okay. So that is the difference between active and passive vibration control. For controlling the vibration, we can uh, uh, fix the isolator pad or uh, we can use any control strategies in the following three places. The first one is source. So the source of vibration. For example, if a machine is generating vibration, then uh, the machine is the source of vibration. Then the second one is path. So if a machine is fitted on the shop floor and you are standing on the floor, then you can feel the vibration on your leg. So there, the floor is transmitting the vibration. In some of the cases, uh, because of vibration, noise may be generated. Okay. So there, the noise is transmitted through the air medium. There, air is the path. Receiver. So we are the receivers. So when you are standing, then your leg will feel the vibration. Then your leg is the receivers. In the case of noise, then we can uh, feel the sound. Okay. So we are the receiver. So we can use the control strategies in source or in path or in receiver. So I'll give you an example for source control, path control and receiver control. So let us imagine that a machine is fitted on a floor. So the machine is vibrating with heavy amplitude. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to identify the fault in the machine and I'm going to control the vibration. For example, let us assume that the machine is having a heavy unbalanced force. So I'm going to add some uh, uh, trial masses and I'm going to do the process of uh, field balancing and I'm going to neglect the balance that is source control. Or otherwise, you can fix a isolator pad in between the machine and the floor. Maybe a rubber pad or maybe a uh, spring. So that is source control. We are controlling the vibration at the source itself. In the case of path, you can isolate the machine. In uh, uh, most of the industries, the high vibrating machineries or uh, 
ஐசோலேட்டட் ஃப்ரம் தி ஆஃபீஸ் ஃபார் எக்ஸாம்பிள் த மெக்கானிக்கல் ஒர்க் ஷாப்ஸ் ஆர் ஆல்வேஸ் ஐசோலேட்டட் ஃப்ரம் தி காலேஜ் பில்டிங்ஸ் ஸோ த ரீசன் இஸ் வி ஆர் ஐசோலேட்டிங் த வைப்ரேஷன் அட் இட்ஸ் பாத் ஆர் அதர்வைஸ் யூ கேன் யூ கேன் கீப் த மிஷினரி இன்சைட் எ க்ளோஸ்டு ரூம் ஸோ வி ஆர் கண்ட்ரோலிங் த நாய்ஸ் இன் இட்ஸ் பாத் தென் த தேர்ட் ஒன் இஸ் ரிசீவர் ஸோ யூ கேன் வியர் அ ஷூ so that uh, you will not feel the vibration on the floor or otherwise you can use some air buds so that you will not feel the noise so that is receiver control okay so we are going to see uh, the various possibilities of source control path control and receiver control in this co so first we'll start with vibration isolation so vibra- vibration isolation means it's a process of isolating the vibrating object from the receiver for example if a machine is vibrating then i am going to isolate the machine from the floor if uh, engine is vibrating and i am going to isolate the engine from the chassis okay so isolation means i am going to use some isolator pads okay so in passive vibration control i can use rubber or cork as the isolation pad so in most of the machineries you might have seen this so they will use some rubber material in between the leg and the floor of the machine okay so that the rubber material will absorb the vibration and it will isolate the vibration generated in the machine and it will not allow the generated vibration to be transmitted to the floor so this is the uh, representation of isolator so in the case of active control then we are going to use some sensors and actuators anyway we are not going to focus on active control first we'll uh, see the passive vibration control then we'll move into the active control so here we are controlling the vibration at its source because we are isolating the source okay so this is called as vibration isolation so the force transmitted to the floor is equal to the force generated in the machine if there is no isolation so if 1000 newton of force is generated in the machine then if there is no isolator then the same amount of force is transmitted to the floor so that will vibrate the floor and that will damage the floorings okay so we have to use some isolator pads in between the machine and the floor to uh, isolate the vibration so in dynamics you might have uh, studied the term transmissibility ratio tr so tr is equal to f t by f that is force transmitted divided by force generated okay so if tr is equal to 1 then the same amount of transmitted force is tran- i mean generated force is transmitted to the floor so for uh, Uh, isolation purpose always we have to keep the transmissibility ratio less than 0.8 okay so if it is uh, higher than 1 then uh, the situation is most dangerous so we can use some uh, suspension system or damping elements to reduce the transmissibility ratio less than 1 so this is uh, an example for undamped spring mode so here uh, the spring is there but there is no damper this is a damped spring mode here spring is there also damper is also there so in the case of spring undamped spring mount then uh, the system will take more number of cycle to come to the rest in the case of damped spring mode then the system will uh, come to rest immediately because we are providing some damping so this is a, a pump in a power plant so it's actually a feed water pump so you can see that the isolator springs are fitted in between the leg of the pump and the floor so here if the vibration generated in the pump is high then this springs will isolate the system and the tra- tra- generated vibrations will not be transmitted to the floor okay so this is an example so these are all some of the types of vibration isolators so here it's an undamped spring isolator here a metal wire is used as a vibration isolator so the vibration isolation is used in two types of situation the first one is the foundation or base of a machine vibration is protected against large unbalanced forces so here the foundation or base is a rigid one and the machine is vibrating so that is the first possibility and the second one is the system is protected against the motion of the foundation in nuclear plants uh, the nuclear reactor is isolated from the 
foundation because if uh, earthquake happens then the vibration generated because of the earthquake will not be transmitted to the reactor okay so these are all two situations where we can use the vibration isolator so the first one is the system is a rigid i mean this uh, foundation is a rigid and the system is vibrating okay so this is very common so the isolation we are using for uh, the engines or any motors or comes under this first category that is the system is vibrating but the foundation will be rigid one so in this case we can insert a spring and damper in between the machine and the foundation or otherwise you can use a rubber pad or a cork material in between the machine and the foundation to isolate the vibration so this is the first case this is the transmissibility curve for the first case so from the graph uh, the x axis is r that is the frequency ratio it is omega by omega n and the y axis is transmissibility that is ft by f remember that for us the transmissibility ratio always should be less than 1 so if the r value is uh, greater than 1.5 then the transmissibility ratio for all Uh, damping factor values will be less than one, but if the frequency ratio, that is R value, is less than one point five, then the transmissibility ratio is high. Okay, so that too, when the R is equal to one, the transmissibility ratio is infinity. So when R is equal to one means at a resonance, at resonance, the transmissibility ratio is very high. Okay, which means the generated force. is amplified and it is transmitted to the foundation for example if the transmissibility ratio is 2 then if 100 newton of force is generated then 200 newton of force will be transmitted to the foundation okay so that is the, uh, the meaning for transmissibility ratio so for uh, the isolated system always we have to keep the r value greater than 1.5 fine then this is the transmissibility ratio transmissibility ratio means it is a by b okay so the amplitude of the foundation and b is the amplitude of the machine so for r value uh, greater than 1.5 the transmissibility ratio is less than 1 and for r value less than 1.5 the transmissibility ratio is greater than 1 okay so for uh, safe region always we have to keep the r value that is omega by omega n value as greater than 1.5 so that you will get less transmiss force transmissibility ratio as well as the displacement transmissibility ratio then the points to be noted from the transmissibility curve so as i told earlier for uh, omega by omega n is greater than 2 then isolation occurs that is transmissibility ratio is less than 1 whereas for uh, omega by omega n less than 2 then amplification occurs that is the generator force is uh, amplified and it is transmitted to the foundation in that case the transmissibility ratio is greater than 1 so the next one is at resonance the amplitude will ratio i mean transmissibility ratio will be really high okay then the second one so here the system is a rigid one and the foundation is vibrating okay so here uh, for example as i told earlier in the power plants the nuclear power plants the reactor is isolated from the base motion so this is the example for case 2 that is isolation of system from base motion so in this case uh, this is actually an experiment that is conducted for uh, the computer so here the foundation is vibrating and here also we are going to keep A isolator that is damper and a spring in between the machine and the foundation so the procedure is same for both case 1 and case 2 but in case 1 the vibration is transmitted from the machine to the foundation here from the foundation it is transmitted to the machinery then coming to the transmissibility curve so the force transmissibility curve is almost like uh, uh, the previous case that is for omega by omega n is a uh, greater than root 2 the transmissibility ratio will be less than 1 for all damping factors in case of r by r value less than root 2 then the transmissibility ratio will be high but 
this is uh, i mean this is the transmissibility ratio i mean uh, displacement transmissibility but in the case of force transmissibility for uh, r value root 2 the force transmissibility is 2 and for r value less than uh, 0.5 or maybe 0.4 the transmissibility ratio is less than 1 for remaining all values the r value i mean transmissibility ratio r value will be high okay so you should not keep uh, the r value as greater than 2 in the case of uh, base motion okay so that is why the base vibration is uh, called as a typical one because uh, the machine will not have any support when uh, the foundation vibrates automatically the vibration will be transmitted to the machinery because the machinery will be a floating one so that is why we will not get uh, exact uh, less than one transmissibility ratio in any situations okay so this is a, a very uh, typical situation we have to fix the r value based on the two things that is tra displacement transmissibility ratio and force transmissibility ratio and uh, we have to uh, try to keep the r value uh, so less than 0.5 so that you will get the force transmissibility ratio as less than 1 So this is the third case, vibration isolation with flexible foundation. So here, both the systems are flexible. For example, your automobile. Okay, so your automobile is moving on the uh, road. So the tire is receiving the vibration from the, uh, I mean, uh, bumps from the uh, road. So your tire is ge generating the vibration and it is transmitting the vibration to the vehicle. so there the tire is a floating one and the vehicle is also a floating one so there is no rigid system so this is very very critical in this case the system is considered as a 2 degrees of freedom system so in your automobile your tire is considered as one mass and uh, i mean the wheel and your vehicle body is considered as the second mass so it is it has 2 degrees of freedom so isolating the system in 2 degrees of freedom it's very difficult okay so this is the equation of motion for 2 degrees of freedom we have already seen this equation of motion in the first co so this is uh, the supporting structure in your automobile this is your tire and this is your vehicle body okay so the force is generated and it is transmitted to the vehicle body okay so here it is considered as 2 degrees of freedom and controlling the vibration in 2 degrees of freedom is very difficult 